Welcome to the March Hoboken Board of Education meeting. This is my favorite meeting of the year as we'll be celebrating our educators, our professional service providers, and our students tonight. We welcome our students and families, our governors, educators of the year, and our governors, professional service providers of the year. In addition to celebrating the amazing people in our lives, the board will be presented with the administration's initial draft budget. The board will not be voting on the budget tonight. That won't take place until May, but rather voting to adopt the budget. After tonight's meeting, the budget will be then sent to the county for review, and the board will review and understand the makeup of the budget over the next few months. The administration will present the budget at the May 2nd meeting, and the board will vote on the budget at the May 9th board meeting. With that being said, Ms. Good, can you please read the statement of compliance? This meeting is being held in conformity to the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10 colon 4-6. Proper public notice of the meeting was published in the local papers on January 7, 2023. If any board member or member of the public in attendance believes that the meeting is in violation of the Open Public Meeting Act, the Hoboken Board of Education requests that they make a statement at this time. The board wishes to make those in attendance aware that this meeting is being recorded on video and will be broadcast by the board at a later date on CATV Channel 77 and Files Channel 46. The full meeting recording will also be made available on door board docs, which can be accessed through the district homepage. The Hoboken Board of Education is committed to preserving the decorum of the public process and is mindful that we live in the electronic age of computers, cell phones, and other electronic communication devices. Nevertheless, we respectfully request that all meeting participants kindly silence their electronic devices during the course of the meeting, and if use of the device is necessary, we ask that you please leave the meeting room if you need to conduct personal business. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can we take the roll call, please, Ms. Good? Ms. Katamatori. Here. Ms. Delira. Nope. <laughs> this is the wrong thing. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. This is wrong. She doesn't have the update about Mr. Delator. Here. Ms. Connor. Here. Mr. Kluffel. Here. Ms. McGurk. Here. Mr. Carrion. Ms. Angley. Here. I'm missing, what's his name? Ms. Norwood. And Mr. Grana. Here. You have a quorum. Okay, next we're going to move into the exciting part of our night, the recognition portion of our meeting. So with at this time, I will turn the meeting over to our Assistant Superintendent, Ms. Rodriguez-Gomez. Good evening. Before, before we celebrate our Students of the Month, we have a very special guest with us today, a young woman from Connors Elementary School who continues to amaze us with her passion, her intelligence, and her style. On two separate occasions, we have asked her to recite The Hills We Climb, a poem by Amanda Gorman, at our past two Black History Month celebrations. And both years, she has impressed and dazzled us. We now want to just make it public that we want her presence at every Black History Month celebration moving forward, because that's just how impactful she is. We could not be more proud of the hills that Journey Goodwin climbs each and every day. Journey, can you stand, please? <laughs> we truly adore her and want to recognize her with her certificate and certainly with a rousing round of applause, please. <laughs> J 
journey. Tonight, we give you our certificate, but most importantly, we give you our love, we give you our commitment to excellence, and we want you to become what we call a tradition. So now, I want to give you a certificate. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and this is for you. Thank you for having me. You're fantastic. Another round of applause. Okay. Good evening, members of our Board of Education, Superintendent Dr. Johnson, administrators, faculty, families, and of course, our students. Also, happy Women's History Month to all. While all of our board meetings are special, tonight is an extra special one, as we will be celebrating both our Students of the Month for the month of February and our governors, educate, our governors, teachers, and educational service professionals of the year for the current school year of 2023-24. So tonight, Hoboken Public Schools will really get to show off. We will begin by honoring our students and then, of course, transition to our governor's awardees in a seamless fashion. As always, I am honored to stand before you as our amazing principals take the podium to celebrate our students first and our staff second. We are proud of all of our students, but those who we will celebrate tonight have truly excelled and proven that no matter what, anything is possible in Hoboken. In the words of Marva Collins, success doesn't come to you, you've got to go to it. Please give us your attention as we celebrate all of their hard work their dedication, and their desire to go to it. We will begin the recognition with Joseph F. Brandt's principal, Mr. Bartlett. He will celebrate his selection at the podium and will then introduce the Connors principal, Ms. Addy. She will then follow this same pattern, introducing our next presenters, Vice Principal Lawrence of Wallace Elementary, Principal Sorfine of Hoboken Middle, and Principal Pika Pietra of Hoboken High School. Once the students have been honored, I will come back up to the podium, share brief comments, and then each principal will return to share thoughts on their school's governor awardees. They will receive their awards and flowers and will stand by for pictures with their families. With that, I thank you for your time and I turn the podium over to Principal Bartlett. Thank you, Mrs. Rodriguez Gomez, and good evening, everyone. At this time, I would like to ask Dahlia Machuca Juarez to join me at the podium, please. Felicidades a Dahlia Machuca Juarez, la estudiante del mes de febrero de 2023 por la Escuela Elementaria Joseph F. Brandt. Dahlia is a third grade student and was nominated by her homeroom teacher, Mrs. Wagg. Ms. Wagg said, Dahlia is always kind and caring towards classmates and teachers. She is always willing to cheer a friend up when they are feeling down or offer a hug when someone needs it. Dahlia also always shares her artwork with teachers and shares her toys with the class. She has shown so much progress academically and is a welcome addition to our third grade community. We look forward to her continued progress in third grade. This sentiment was echoed by Ms. Streeser, who is a co-teacher in Homeroom 304. She said, Dahlia is an inclusive member of our classroom. She is friendly towards all students, helpful to both kids and adults, cares strongly for others, and always has a positive attitude. She has also shown so much growth in our classroom as a student. We are so proud to have her as a part of our classroom community. Ms. Gonzalez, a paraprofessional who assists in Homeroom 304, said, Dahlia is always so bubbly, walking around with a smile on her face. She has a positive attitude even when dealing with something difficult and is a delight to have in the classroom. As principal, I am amazed to see how Dahlia has grown since joining us. Each day she gets more confident and comfortable and she continues to reveal, reveal herself as a hardworking, caring individual. 
I have no doubt that she will excel in any leadership role she finds herself in as she continues her academic career. She came to Brandt last year and has already made a lasting impression on her classmates and teachers with her wonderful smile and kind personality. Dahlia is an asset to the school community because she epitomizes kindness and caring, which are tenets and core values we espouse every day in our kindness pledge. If you were to think of students who live and represent the words of the pledge, Dahlia is most certainly one of them. Dahlia loves art and enjoys drawing pictures for her classmates and teachers. She shows a love for school across all subjects and is always eager to learn. When told she would be recognized as our student of the month, Dahlia said, I feel good that I was picked for student of the month. I never got it last year. I feel happy for them picking me. Thank you for choosing me. Know this, Dahlia. We didn't pick or choose you for this honor. You earned it, and it is well deserved. Te lo ganaste, bien merecido. Please join me in a round of applause for Dahlia Machuca Juarez, the Brand Student of the Month for February 2023. Okay, At this time, I'd like to welcome to the podium the Connors Elementary School principal, Ms. Juliana Addy. At this time, I would like to call up Taylor Zabaletta, our Connors Student of the Month for February 2023. Taylor Zabaleta is a fifth grade student in Ms. Lauren Schultes' class. We are so proud to recognize Taylor as Student of the Month. Ms. Schultes says that Taylor lights up the classroom with her enthusiasm and determination. She puts her best effort into all of her school assignments and is always ready to participate in class discussions. Taylor works hard even when assignments are difficult. She treats others with respect and is a role model for her peers. Academically, Taylor is meeting all expectations. Whenever Taylor learns a new concept, she's ready and prepared to ask questions to better understand anything that may be confusing. She takes all of her assignments seriously and loves learning. Taylor is a great friend and caring student. She is always ready to help a friend in the classroom if they don't understand something. In small groups during ELA and math class, she is always ready to help a fellow classmate better understand the story or math equation. I had a chance to sit down with Taylor today about the special accomplishment and honor. Taylor shared that when she found out that she was nominated for Student of the Month to represent all of Connors, she felt so excited, proud, and happy. She's also so proud that she is an honor roll student. I asked Taylor when she, what she wants to be when she grows up, and she shared that she wants to be a veterinarian because she loves animals, science, and math. She absolutely loves problem solving, and to be a good veterinarian, you need to be warm, patient, and be a great detective. In our meeting, Taylor also reflected that this is her first year at Connors. She said that it was, an easy, it was easy to adjust to her new school because not only did she already have a best friend here, but she also made lots of new friends here at Connors. Her classmates shared how much they adore Taylor. They shared how Taylor is always so respectful and responsible and that she is so kind to everyone. Taylor, we are so proud that you made Student of the Month honor roll and are always so respectful, responsible, and kind. You exhibit the qualities of a Connors koala, and you make Connors better with you in it. I am so glad that you came to Connors. Please join me in a round of applause to congratulate Taylor Zavaladar, our Connors student. At this time, I'd like to call up Ms. Liz Lawrence, Vice Principal of Wallace Elementary School.
Thank you. I'd like to ask Ahana Beze to join me at the podium, as well as elementary schools, Student of the Month for February. <laughs> Ahana was nominated by her second grade teacher, Ms. Kabinsky, for her relentless effort and her excellent character. Each and every day, Ahana is ready to take on any academic challenge that comes her way. Her dignity, her dil sorry, diligent work ethic is demonstrated in the quality of her work and her enthusiasm for learning is contagious. When asked about Ahana, Ms. Kabinsky shared, Ahana is an excellent student who always puts her best effort forward and is eager to help her teacher and classmates learn. She listens attentively and applies learning across disciplines. Ahana is truly a pleasure to have in class. Ms. Kabinsky is so proud of Ahana for this accomplishment and has no doubt that she will continue to achieve great things throughout the remainder of the school year. Recently, during the second marking period academic pep rally, Ahana was recognized for her extraordinary effort. This award epitomizes what it means to be a wildcat and is earned by students who engage in classwork to the best of their ability, persevere when faced with challenges, and embody a growth mindset. Way to roar, Ahana. Whether she is in the classroom or at recess, Ahana consistently strives to encourage others to do their best and feel their best. She's always thinking of ways to include her peers in activities and is a great friend to all. Outside of school, she operates with the same level of character and includes her little sister, Anisha, as she reads, draws, and plays. Although her favorite subject in school is math, Ahana enjoys being creative and would love to be an artist when she grows up. When asked about Ahana and her nomination, it is no surprise that her friends and teachers had nothing but positive things to share. One of her classmates said, she is really sweet and smart. Another friend said, Ahana is kind, friendly, and a good friend, so it makes sense. And finally, her CTY teacher, Ms. Ferrara, sums it all up by saying, Ahana is an absolute delight. It is a true honor to watch her learn and grow through her challenging CTY journey. Please join me in congratulating Ahana, our Wallace School Student of the Month for February. At this time, I'd like to call Principal Sorafine, or Ryan Sorafine, Principal of Hoboken Middle School, to the podium. Thank you, Ms. Lawrence. Please welcome to the podium Hoboken Middle School's February student of the month, Sienna Hyman. Sienna has been nominated by our sixth grade team. Since the first day of school, she has exemplified everything we look for in a student. She is kind to her peers, participates in class often, and always puts in maximum effort. Sienna is always willing to share a smile or a kind word and always represents our school with Tiger Pride. Ms. Bruce shared that Sienna is an asset to her classroom because she is a consistent role model for her peers. Despite her quiet demeanor, she is always willing to participate and help a classmate. She is always on task, completes her assignments with minimal errors, and isn't afraid to ask for help when she needs it. Sienna shared with me that she is part of Chorus, Best Buddies, plays on the middle school basketball team, and spends her summers in sleepaway camp. I have personally gone to Best Buddies and have seen what an asset she is in, to that club. She, are, she has shared that she wants to go to college when she is older and maybe even become a singer. One of her classmates shared that she thinks Sienna was given this honor because she's really smart, thoughtful, funny, and is always great to work with. She is truly a team player. When I asked Sienna how she felt about being chosen as student of the month, she shared that she felt very happy and proud because not only was she chosen out of all of the sixth graders, but she was also chosen out of our entire school community. Sienna shared that she is enjoying her first year at Hoboken Middle School, her favorite part is her teachers and the Tiger Pride Assemblies, and she is really looking forward to becoming a seventh grader. I sat down with her big brother Noah, an eighth grader here at, H at HMS, and he shared 
that he is very proud of her because Sienna works really hard in school and she deserves to be acknowledged. He also shares that she is a great sister and is always nice to him. Is that true? Always. <laughs> we are so proud of Sienna and eager to see all, her all she accomplishes throughout middle school and beyond. Please join me in congratulating Sienna Hyman, Hoboken Middle School's overall student of the month. This time, I'd like to welcome the principal of Hoboken High School, Ms. Pika Pietra. Good evening, everyone. At this time, I'd like to welcome to the podium Nate Lerna, our February Student of the Month. It was only a few months ago we were honoring Nate's sister. Olivia, and now we get to honor you. Your parents must be very proud. <laughs> the words used by all of Nate's teachers were quiet, academically strong, respectful, and committed. I believe Mr. McCauley said it best, he is a quiet force of knowledge. Nate has been an amazing student in my video class, sharing information about the film industry and joining in our conversations as we dissect cinematography, acting, and storytelling. Nate also seems to have a love of Stephen King novels. Ms. Sillabeg shared that Nate has shown a lot of aptitude for science in general and is very enthusiastic about nature, the environment, evolution, and many of the other topics that we have touched upon this year. He was extremely impressed this past week when Nate was able to balance chemical equations with ease. He seemed to have a real knack for it and is as if he had done it before, but it was his first time. Ms. Solabay got excited, didn't he? Yeah. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Melinda shared, Nate is the perfect example of a reader and his natural intelligence is bolstered by his reading. He loves to learn and engage in creative thought. Nate is dedicated, diligent, and determined. He will go on to do great things in the future. He is a sophomore at Hoboken High School and challenges himself with AP and pre-AP classes. He boasts a current GPA of 3.75 and is committed to his personal growth and the growth of his school community. I asked Nate a few questions. Here is what he shared. Best experience at Hoboken High School was meeting his friends, who include Fern, Shy, Yasleen, Cami, and El. His parents and his teachers are the drive behind his academic success. While he is not sure what he will pursue in college, Brown University is his top choice. We'll make that happen. When he is not studying or reading, he loves being around his friends and his cat. While we see, all see Nate as quiet, his friends describe him as funny yet understanding. He loves volleyball and looks forward to going to college and moving on to graduate school. He wanted to express his gratitude for this honor and I can only say thank you for being such an amazing Red Wing. Congratulations, Nate. students recognized tonight. We can't see what each of your futures hold. Um, and now before we go to our governor's awards, we would like to call the Hoboken Middle School student government representative, Olivia Dunn. Good evening. My name is Olivia Dunn and I'm here today representing the student council at Hoboken Middle School. During the month of February, we celebrated Black History Month at HMS. The Student Council created posters to honor influential African Americans highlighting their achievements and contributions. These posters were on display in the fourth floor hallway for all to see. 
We also participated in a daily Who Am I Challenge. And each morning, Mr. Sorafian would describe an influential African American during the morning announcements, and the students had an opportunity to guess who he was describing. Classroom teachers would then call into the office to give their guess as to who as to who the person was and the winning classroom would be announced over the loudspeaker. We also spent time in our classrooms learning about prominent African American figures, past and present. In Ms. Nodine's ELA class, eighth graders watched a TED Talk which discussed the importance of talking openly about race and in creative writing, they researched issues that minority groups face today. In Ms. Donnelly's ELA class, eighth graders wrote a research essay detailing the legacy of John Lewis, civil rights activist and politician. Students analyzed the influential influence of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. on Representative John Lewis. Using the skills learned in the research writing unit, students researched the topic who wrote their essays based on the thesis statement and cited their sources. In Ms. Lamar's grade six ELA class, students completed a poetry one-pager project based on poems by notable black authors and poets. Seventh graders immersed themselves into the poetry Langston Hughes. Students close read and annotated three famous Hughes poems, Mother to Son, Harlem, and I Too. While reading, students analyzed the powerful imagery and symbolism in, the, in each text relating these images to, heart, to large themes of injustice, civil rights, and resilience in the face of adversity. Students worked in groups to create posters and represented the images of links and Hughes. The finished products include quotes and symbols that had a great impact on our seventh grade readers. Our PTO continues to promote the second booster wall that we'll be working on soon. Hoboken Middle School students and staff were also recognized as Kindness cer cer Certified School. After our celebration of Kindness Week and Challenge, HMS Tigers were busy checking off ways to be kind inside and out of school. Because of everybody's hard work and dedication, Hoboken Middle School is proud to wear the Kindness Certified Seal. Way to go, Tigers. A special shout out to Ms. Falcone, school counselor, for organizing this great event. Our HMS theater program put on their production of I Hate Valentine's Day. The show incorporated the different viewpoints and perspectives that students face in, I, in on Valentine's Day. Unlimitedly became a journey to love yourself before loving others. Bravo to all the actors and actresses who showcased their talents and hard work. The theater department also invited any and all students who would like to participate in the year's district production, the SpongeBob Musical, to audition. Auditions were held during the month of February and callbacks as well as rehearsal have already been put out. In November, students at Hoboken Middle School entered the Hoboken Elks National Drug Awareness Contest, which invited students to create a reflective piece of writing on the theme, One Pill Can Kill. Competing against hundreds of students across Hudson County, we were proud to say that middle school placed first, second, and third amongst hundreds of students, a wonderful, incredible achievement. In, f in first place, the in first place, the sixth grader, Adela Horn, Adela's essay was selected by the Elks Eastern District, which includes lodges from Weehawken, Ridgefield Park, Bayonne, Cliffside Park, Closter, Tina Fly, and Palisades Fort Lee. As a winner to be entered in the New Jersey Statewide Contest, in the second place was a fellow sixth grader, Crochet Chug. In third, and in third place is Elise Pascual who is also in sixth grade. The Hoboken Elks awarded each winner with a certified achievement along with a monetary prize. Please take some time to watch each winner read their incredible essay below. A huge thank you to our teachers for leading this writing contest. Also, during the month of February, auditions were held for the Tigers Got Talent, where students and staff were able to showcase their talents to the rest of the schools and community. In conjunction with the Tigers Got Talent Showcase, students at Hoboken Middle School were recognized for their excellent achievement in areas of academics. Hoboken Middle School also celebrated Read Across America on Thursday, March 2nd, 2023. 
in an effort to engage all students in ded dedicated reading time, part students participated in Drop Everything and Read Dear Time at a scheduled time during the day. The, the month of February was also filled with excitement in our Passport to Learning Clubs, students in the Hudson River Explorers Institute and Hoboken School Environmental Science Club visited the Liberty State Park Na Nature Center and Cave and Point. They were greeted by biologists Sarah Jane and Teresa from the NJDEP. The students visited and interacted with expositions at the Nature Center and were treated to present about the Hudson River estuary. The students were went to the Cave and Point and protected a nature natural portion of Liberty State Park. They did a survey of the shoreline and identified many Hudson River species, including sponges, seaweed, mussels, clams, horseshoe crabs, and more. The weather was wonderful, and the students had such a great time. Students in Pickleball had an opportunity to take advantage of the good weather we experienced in February and were able to take their practice outside. They worked on their close game interaction and hand-to-eye coordination by playing table tennis. They also held a rally tournament instead of seeing which team could beat the other to obtain by victory points earned. Both teams had to work together to try and see which two teams could volley the ball back and forth without the ball hitting the floor. Shep It Up celebrated Valentine's Day by baking their first ever heart-shaped stuffed ham and cheese puff pastries. Adding to the love in the air, they also made a heart-shaped cinnamon rolls. Later in the month, they also made a chicken ranch or barbecue roll-ups pro pierogies and even brownies. This month in HMS printmaking, students explored an experimental approach to make scented tomes. After, during, after turning the classroom into a dark room once again, preparing for a lot of paper with photosensitive hallucinum, and learning about the history of the, this arcanum form of photography, which students experience with different ways of making these prints. This month, students chose to practice top rope or bouldering. They continued to challenge themselves and attempted to climb more difficult walls. The chorus club finished working on our Lion King melody, focusing on our Zulu language pronounce uh, the circle of life and the king of Pride Rock. We started our Trolls melody, which introduced some harmonic challenges as part of part one and part two. Singers must hold their own notes. The, the, song, the songs in the melody include Just Sing, Get Back Up Again, True Colors, Can't Stop the Feeling, Dance, Move Your Feet, and It's Sunshine Day. Our junior thespians participated learning a new theater games and conducted student-centered auditions, tips and tricks, in participation for the upcoming auditions for district-wide musical SpongeBob. The HMS Band Club expanded their range using lots of tone-up worms in high and low range. Our young musicians pushed further into the first concert song, Mission Impossible, working to feel the pulse of the song with five beats per measure. The HMS academic team competed in the National Graphy Geography Challenge this week. In under 35 minutes, our sixth graders answered 40 multiple choice questions, and our seventh graders answered 50 multiple choice questions geography based questions. Our scores will be entered and in May we will really receive results to how placed amongst other middle schools across the nation. Students in the artist corner enjoyed a special demonstration on screen printing. Many students had a chance to take turns in making their own prints which they were made at home. HMS GSA continued their LGBTQ plus media study this month by watching the short film Tyler and produced by Joel Jr. Films. The film featured a boy named Tyler and his brother Daniel. They spent time together over lunch and their conversation Tyler comes out to his brother. GSA members analyzed what Daniel did right in his response to coming out to his brother as well as some things he could have done differently. Finally, the Hoboken Public Schools Special Services Department in collaboration with partners in preventation will be faculty 
Faculty-ing a Strengthening Families program from February 7th to March 21st, 2023. The mission of Partners in Prevention in, is to improve wellness and prevent substance abuse in disorders and help challenges against the Hudson County in New Jersey. The Strengthening Families program is a seven session program that will focus on the following themes, love and limits, making house rules, encouraging good behavior, using consequences, building bridges, protecting against substance abuse, getting health help for special families in need. Thank you for this opportunity to talk to you today and we look forward to speaking with you again at, to bring all the exciting things that happen in the March, a month of March to you. It's always great to have you here hearing about what is happening at the middle school and there's certainly a lot happening so exciting stuff we look forward to seeing you back in April next we will invite our Hoboken High School student government representative Ms. Haley Benway Hello, I'm Haley Benway, the Hoboken High School Student Government Ju um, Junior Council Vice President. It is an honor to speak with you this evening. Before I continue with my address, I would like to honor and mention Ms. Caradonio, who is the Hoboken High School Math Teacher of the Year and just the Teacher of the Year. So would you please join me in applauding her for her great accomplishments? <laughs> I am filling in for Naomi Cook and a majority of the leadership as they are in Spain representing Hoboken High School at the 2023 Harvard Model Congress European Conference. The Hoboken High School Student Government and Hoboken High School Student Activities Office had a productive and busy month. This past month was a successful morning announcements program, class council meetings and organizational meetings, food drive, flag raising, and Read Across America initiative. Members will be reading to your younger students beginning with Ms. Martinez's class in Wallace on Thursday. This month is Women's History Month. We are engaged in an aggressive morning announcement and social media campaign to highlight women's historical achievements. The Hoboken High School student government has raised the National Women's Party Women's Suffrage flag in honor of Women's History Month. Alice Paul founded the Women's Party in 1916 as a lobbying organization to promote women's suffrage. The suffrage flag was created to celebrate each state that included a suffrage amendment in their state constitution. The final flag has 36 stars, representing 36 states, which was the final number needed to ratify the suffrage amendment in the U.S. Constitution. This replica flag is a reminder of the hard work done by the National Women's Party towards granting women the right to vote. Charity Volleyball Series. The Hoboken High School student government defeated the Bayonne High School student government in three sets in their second meeting this year for their charity volleyball game series at Bayonne High School on March 3rd. The Red Wings also defeated the Bees during their first meeting in February at Hoboken High School. The Red Wings swept. With February's meeting, the student government raised funds for the Hoboken Education Foundation. And this past week, student government raised funds for the Imagine NJ. Imagine NJ's vision is to support children and their families coping with loss and foster resiliency and emotional well-being for all those who grieve. We are proud of the Hoboken High School student government for their superb athletic play and their altruism to raise money for these worthwhile charities. This month is Irish American Heritage Month. The, first, the student government hosted an Irish national flag raising on March 3rd. The Super Bowl. The Red Wings Care Coalition hosted a Super Bowl food drive. Students collected cans of soup for Red Wings Collaborative Effort Project. Hoboken HS Mock Trial. The Hoboken Red Wings Mock Trial team won the Hudson County Championship. The Red Wings Mock Trial team defeated an initiative high school and Bayonne High School in the preliminary round, McNair Academic High School in the quarterfinals, and finally the Hudson School in the championship to win the 2023 Hudson County Championship. These victories were only possible because of the hard work and support of the entire Red Wing mock trial team. This is their third Hudson County Championship in the last four years. Congratulations, Mr. Huggins and Mr. DiBernardo and the whole mock trial. <laughs> Boys basketball. The Hoboken High School boys team advanced to the sectional championship this past season, losing in the championship by only two points, 52-50 to Newark Tech. 
This is a team that battled injuries all seasons and still made it to Group 1 Section 2 Finals. Their future is bright for the Red Wings. Hoboken High School's Boys Basketball 2023 County Honors were just released by the Hudson County Interscholastic, Interscholastic Athletic League. Congratulations to First Team All-County National Division, seniors Jasir Lane and Joel Lopez. Team All County National Division sophomore Lamir Boxley. And finally, honorable mention National Division junior Simon Silberatelli Byman. Safe sitters. This week and last week, Ms. McGreevy and Ms. Pogo ran our safe sitter training for seven students. This program, sponsored by the Student Center, teaches teens how to be safe at home alone while watching siblings or babysitting. They receive training indoor safety, outdoor safety, child development, child care basics, behavior management, first aid, injury management, infant and child choking rescue, infant and child PR, and running a babysitting business. We would like to thank the Student Center staff, especially Mr. Keenan Walker, for supporting his valuable training and providing support to the program in so many ways, including the great snacks. Model UN. The Hoboken High School debate program participated for the first time in the Rutgers Model United Nations in Philadelphia. This year's team was composed of four veteran members of the debate program. Sava Toman, Miles Angley, Alexander Gray, and L. Dixie, and 17 students new to the HHS debate program. For many, this was their first time participating in a government simulation conference. Araya Kahana and uh, excuse me, Samantha Godmer helped author resolutions concerning adapting to the digital age and political empowerment and decision making. They were recognized by the chair during their closing ceremony and won the Most Improved Delegate Award. As members of the World Health Organization, Sarah Burns and Louise Dirk sponsored resolutions focused on healthcare worker shortage and combating malaria. Hannah Morley and Emily Critz sponsored the final resolutions entitled COP28, which was focused on revaluating past climate change legislation. David Price and Lucas Daly, as members of the UN Office on Drug and Crime, sponsored a resolution to combat fraudulent medicines in South Sudan. Sava Toman and Miles Angley, as members of the Social, Humanitarian, and Cultural Organization, sponsored resolutions concerning ethnic displacement. Our Red Wings represented Israel and the United Arab um, Emirates. Throughout the conference, each member of our delegations displayed a willingness to learn resilience and outstanding effort. Delegations of Israel, Sava Toman, Aurelia Dixie, Alexander Gray, Miles Angley, Christopher Logan Munoz, Lucas Daly, Max Sisler, Edison Villasis, Grayson Steer, David Prince, Ad and Addison Rumpf. Delegation for the United Arab Emirates, Jayla Johnson, Jenna Sirio, Louise Dirks, Araya Kahana, Isabel Holmberg, Allison Chavez, Samantha Gottimer, Hannah Morley, Sarah Burns, Emily Kritz, Shruti Rothmore, and Addison Rumpf. Every high school Every Hoboken High delegate set daily goals and challenged themselves to achieve them in committee. Many learned valuable strategies and lessons that took them with, to the St. Peter's Model United Nations Conference on March 6th and 7th, competing against other schools from the Northeast. Harvard Model Congress. The HS Harvard Model Congress team is currently in Madrid, Spain, for the 2023 European Conference. The Hoboken High School is one of the only schools in the nation attending this conference. We can't wait to give you all the details in our next report. But we can share that thus far, Hoboken High School has won 12 awards, more than any other represented at that conference. <laughs> Best buddies at Hoboken High School. We finalized our buddy matches. The good news is that we have so many participants that we were able to assign two peer buddies, neurotypical students, to one buddy, student with intellectual and development disabilities, or IDD. This month's after-school event was a big success. This month we celebrate Best Buddies Month and Development Disability Awareness Month. All students are encouraged to spend time with one another during or after school. Next month, April, we kick off the Best Buddies Friendship Walk, which will all be held on Sunday, April 23rd at the Bergen County Community College. Our annual Best Buddies fundraiser will be announced. Literary Magazine. Congratulations to Sophie Katz for winning the Literary Magazine Valentine's Day Writing Contest. She submitted a short essay entitled Sliminate Stand 
and won a $25 Dunkin' Donuts gift card. Um, the Hoboken Board of Education Theater Department. The department will be hosting a SpongeBob Blue Owl fundraiser on Tuesday, March 28th at 5 p.m. in the Hoboken High School cafeteria. The cost is $10 for students and $15 for adults. Dinner is included. There will be a Disney and Donuts fundraiser on Saturday, April 1st, 1st 2023, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. at JFK Stadium. The cost of admission is $10. And finally, to round out this report, our monthly luncheon with Hoboken High School administration was held on Monday, March 20th, 2023 at 12.45 p.m. Thank you very much for this opportunity to speak to you, and thank you for always supporting our student government and Hoboken High School. We look forward to seeing you at our events. Go Red Wings. Thank you, Haley, for that wonderful update. We look forward to hearing what's happening at Hoboken High School next month. Okay, now we will turn the meeting back over to Ms. Rodriguez Gomez. <laughs> thank you. Now we move into our governor's awardees. Our educators are truly at the core of all that we do and all that makes this school district great. To have been nominated by your peers, by students, by families, and members of the community tell us that those being honored here this evening are exceptionally skilled, highly dedicated experts who inspire students of all backgrounds to learn. They are collaborators, partners with colleagues, students, and families with the purpose of building culture of respect and success. They are leaders and innovators in educational activities in school and beyond. We admire them for all that and more. They are rock stars as they make all of the above seem effortless. Their principals will share testimonials and no doubt you will be moved. With that being said, I would ask Principal Bartlett to again join me at the podium to celebrate his first awardee of the evening. I'd like to ask Francine Yu to come join me at the podium, please. It's fitting that we stand here in March during Women's History Month to honor Francine Yu as our Teacher of the Year. Strong and capable women shine brightly and freely share their talents with tenacity, perseverance, and purpose. Mrs. Yu is such a woman and educator. Her commitment to all children and her ability to bring them face to face with their own potential while embracing and celebrating their differences and what makes them unique embodies what we all envision when we think about who we want teaching our children. Fundamental to bringing students face to face with all they can do is recognizing the individual needs of all learners. Teaching styles from bygone eras where all students are expected to do the same thing in the same way and anyone who can't fit into that absurd mold is somehow considered incapable of learning have no place in a forward thinking inclusive classroom. Francine is a teacher whose forward thinking and inclusive methods illustrate the truth that teaching methods of the 20th century belong in the storage room with the old TV VCR combo carts. She's able to meet the needs of children from all different walks of life. She learns everything she can about her students, their academic profile, their social and emotional needs, their interests, their fears, their hopes, their dreams. Francine uses this information to provide individualized instruction for all of the children entrusted to her on a daily basis. She understands that if a student does their best work laying on the carpet or kneeling under their desk, then they should be able to do that without a second thought. As much as Francine makes all learners comfortable, she makes all people comfortable. She integrates lessons on cultural competency, equity, inclusion, and global awareness. Her students decorate sugar skulls on Dia de los Muertos. They dance on Diwali. They read books about Rosh Hashanah. They make crafts for Valentine's Day and St. Patrick's Day. They are taught to embrace what America is meant to be, a place for all children to feel safe to be themselves and share their stories and their traditions. Francine is also willing to share her time with her colleagues freely. Her friend, Mrs. Lorena Gardner said, Francine creates a classroom where you feel loved, respected, and happy to learn. 
As a mentor, she pushes teachers to be the best version of themselves to make a difference in students' lives. She is a joy to work with. It is indeed fitting that we celebrate Francine here tonight. She's an educator who understands that although times and circumstances and methods are always changing, what is at the heart of all of our decisions never does, and that's nurturing the hopes and dreams of our children. I'm honored to stand here right now and say congratulations to Francine Yu, our Brand School Teacher of the Year. At this time, I'd like to ask Mr. Michael Canigli to come join me at the podium. <clears throat> the best and most effective educational professionals do what needs to be done without hesitation. They're the ones who you know, no matter what you ask, the answer is going to be yes. They do the right thing because it's the right thing to do, and they do it right. That's the best way to describe Michael Coniglia. We are beyond lucky to have him as a member of our brand school team. As an educator, he is willing to share his gifts and talents with anyone who needs them. And Michael's gifts and talents are numerous. Primarily, he shepherds our Johns Hopkins Center for Talented Youth Students through the rigors, trials, and tribulations of their learning modules. He builds their resilience and leadership capabilities by encouraging them to always challenge themselves. He's a facilitator of our New Jersey East STEM Challenge team, building relationships with students from across the district and guiding them on a journey of discovery. Michael's a point person for our NJ STEAM Tank submission process, ensuring our students are confident and capable when presenting their ideas publicly. He's the coordinator of our quarterly newsletter, sharing good news and accomplishments with our school community. He's a leader on the Brant School Sunshine Club, if there's an opportunity to bring a smile to a face or provide a word of encouragement, Michael's willingness to contribute to our positive school climate and culture cannot be overlooked. To many members of our staff, and perhaps what they would consider his most important skill set, he is the de facto non-tech member of our tech team. When your device, of course, stops working right before your formal presentation, or right before the principal comes in for a teaching observation, and all hope is lost, Michael will have everything up and running for you again, thus mitigating your fear and anxiety. <laughs> I can continue to go on about Mike being helpful to our school in any number of ways, but this is not just from my perspective as the principal. Many of his peers feel the same way, perhaps best encapsulated by his friend and colleague, Miss Ashley Babylonia. She said, Mike is and always will be someone you not only want to work with, but someone to have in your corner. He always sees the bright side of life and brings such amazing perspective, especially when things like deadlines and time crunches begin to hover. He always knows what to say to not only bring your own feelings back, but he always brings it back to what is most important, the children. Mike is extremely selfless and is the light we wish to see in all people. As a school community, we are grateful and fortunate to have Mr. C on our team and in our corner. And I'm beyond thrilled to say Please join me in congratulating our Educational Service Professional of the Year at Brandt School, Mr. Michael Coniglia. This time I'd like to welcome back to the podium the Connors Elementary School principal, Mrs. Juliana Addy.
At this time, I would like to call up Ms. Lauren Fleischer, our Connors Teacher of the Year. I am honored to present Ms. Lauren Fleischer as the recipient of the Teacher of the Year for T.G. Connors Elementary School. Ms. Fleischer is an incredible kindergarten teacher on so many levels. When I think of Ms. Fleischer, I think of her love for children and love of learning. She has the warmest nature and is so approachable by children, faculty, and parents day in and day out, during school hours and in her evenings and sometimes even in the middle of the night when she's out worrying about something, Ms. Fleischer always has her students in mind. It takes a big heart to shape little minds and the joy, passion, and care that Ms. Fleischer puts into teaching every lesson is incredibly admirable. Her kindergarten classroom is one of the happiest rooms at Connors. The memories that she is creating for her students will last a lifetime. As parents of four kids of my own, at the end of the day, I want my kids to be happy at school, have friends, be kind to others, learn a ton, and have fun while learning it. Ms. Fleischer creates that magical kindergarten experience that we all want for our children. Ms. Fleischer is so respected throughout the entire Connors community and has her hand in so many aspects of Connors well beyond her classroom walls. She is the grade level kindergarten lead and she is the co-lead to our Passport to Learning program. She works at both morning arrival and lunch. Daily, she can be seen greeting every student by name in the morning and having plun fun playing tag at recess with our students on the playground. Ms. Fleischer also brings so much joy to our faculty, leading our Sunshine Club and School Spirit Club. Ms. Creary shared that Ms. Fleischer has taught her resilience and perseverance. Ms. Massara shared that she is vivacious and outgoing and her positive energy rubs off on everyone around her. When walking into Ms. Fleischer's classroom, you can see her students' eyes glued to her every move. She radiates warmth and care and is truly a superstar teacher. I'm so incredibly proud of her and know that her students are going to look back on their kindergarten year with such fond memories of the magical kindergarten experience that Ms. Fleischer created for them. Congratulations, Ms. Fleischer. You are so deserving of this award. At this time, I would like to call up Ms. Latika Board, our Educational Services Professional of the Year. <laughs> Ms. Latika Boyd is a paraprofessional at Connors in Homeroom 303. If you were to ask me about someone who has the ideal characteristics of a paraprofessional, Ms. Boyd always comes to mind. I think her practices exemplify the model paraprofessional. When we have a new para starting at Connors, I will often have them observe Ms. Boyd working with her students so they can learn from her practices. I'm sure you're all wondering, what, what makes her so incredible? Firstly, she teaches with her heart. She combines warmth and care with genuine kindness. It is extremely inspiring to simply walk down the hallway with Ms. Boyd, as it is so incredible to see how many times she is stopped for a hug, for a smile, or a wave. 
Each time she gets stopped, she engages with her students in conversation about their weekend, their family, and after school basketball game. She will often brighten someone's day with a joke. Not only does she teach with her heart, she also teaches the importance of having a good heart. Students look to her for guidance, for support, and light. Without hesitation, she responds with love and advice and teaches them that they can conquer any obstacle. On top of her genuine warmth for our students, she has high expectations for learning and accountability for greatness. There is never an excuse for not meeting your goals. Miss Boyd will never accept, I can't. Instead, she says, you can. I'll show you how. You can do it. And then provides her students with the tools necessary to help them succeed. And then Miss Boyd is always the first to celebrate you. In Miss Arciero's class family, the kids always joke that when a student accomplishes something big or little, the first person they run to is Miss Boyd to show them what they have done. She keeps the bar high, and because she is so admired with so much respect, students and peers around her rise to the occasion to make her proud. Miss Boyd, we are so incredibly proud that you are a member of our Kowal family. The impact that you have is immeasurable and will last a lifetime. Congratulations. At this time, I'd like to call up Ms. Liz Lawrence, Vice Principal of Wallace. Thank you. At this time, I'd like Mrs. Denise Vallejo Rodriguez, the Wallace Elementary School Teacher of the Year, to join me at the podium. Mrs. Denise Vallejo Rodriguez is truly an exceptionally skilled and dedicated educator. On a daily basis, through her role as Wallace's reading specialist, Mrs. Vallejo Rodriguez inspires and challenges her students to reach their fullest potential by providing a stimulating classroom environment that fosters self-confidence, independence, respect for others, and embraces a natural curiosity for learning. She engages her classes through a multi-sensory approach to teaching reading and integrates high-level academic conversations that push critical thinking skills and bring literacy to life. Denise works extremely hard to ensure learning is student-focused by understanding the science of reading and crafting each lesson to explicitly address students' needs. She is prepared every second of every day and every minute of instructional time is utilized. Mrs. Vallejo Rodriguez has not only inspired countless students and changed numerous lives through her engaging instruction, but also plays an active role in our school community through her leadership. As a teacher leader, she has facilitated professional development for staff and provided literacy coaching and support to both new and seasoned teachers. Denise displays professionalism in all she does and has the respect and admiration of our community. Mrs. Vallejo, Vallejo Rodriguez is also an integral member of our INRS team where she facilitates collaborative relationships with colleagues, students, and families 
to create a school culture of success. She operates on her belief that family partnership is critical to a student's success and creates action plans that best support students' academic, emotional, and social growth. Without a doubt, Mrs. Vallejo Rodriguez deserves this recognition. She is dedicated to helping all students grow as strong, confident readers. She leads with passion, and her talents are an asset to our school community. It is with great pride that I congratulate and present to you Mrs. Denise Rodriguez Vallejo Rodriguez, the 2022-2023 Teacher of the Year for Walls Elementary School. <laughs> I am also honored to be here tonight to celebrate Mrs. Trisha Jose, the Wallace Elementary School Educational Service Professional of the Year. To say that Trisha is anything short of outstanding would be an understatement. Mrs. Jost is a tremendous example of an educator with innate ability to care for all students. The professionalism with which Mrs. Jost approaches her daily responsibilities as a speech-language pathologist are the direct result of her belief that all students can achieve their goals. She brings a wealth of experience to the classroom and skillfully crafts experiences for her students to develop stronger language and communication skills. Mrs. Jost unlocks student potential by creating a risk-free learning environment that embraces diversity and fosters relationships with every student every day. As a veteran staff member, Mrs. Jost is arguably one of Wallace School's most precious commodities due to her active role in our community. She gives unconditionally to her students through small group and one-to-one -one interventions, but is also there for every staff member and every student in need of assistance. She is the friendly face greeting our, first, our second and third graders as they enter the building each morning and consistently serves as a breakfast and lunch monitor. Mrs. Jost also serves as a leader by supporting our INRS team and child study teams. In these roles, she advocates for students to ensure they are provided with educational opportunities to maximize their skill set. She also collaborates with families and fellow educators to develop and implement meaningful educational goals for all learners. We are grateful for Mrs. Jost and her dedicated service and partnership in promoting a successful school environment. Her kindness, compassion, and leadership do not go unnoticed. Mrs. Jost could not be in attendance tonight, but we congratulate and celebrate her as the Wallace Elementary School Service Professional of the Year. Both her plaque and flowers will be delivered to her tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs> At this time, I'd like to turn the podium over once again to Mr. Ryan Sorfin, Principal of Hoboken Middle School. Ms. Lawrence, it is my pleasure to welcome to the podium Hoboken Middle School's Governor's Educator of the Year, Mr. Daniel Bosgra. <laughs> Mr. Bosgra is so deserving of this award. Not only is he an exceptionally skilled educator and instrumental member of our team, he is also one of the most patient, compassionate, and dedicated professionals I have worked with during my time in Hoboken. Mr. Bosgra has been a special education teacher at Hoboken Middle School since 2017. As principal in my first year at Hoboken Middle School, I knew immediately that Mr. Bosgra was the person that I could always count on. He is usually one of the first to arrive, <clears throat> making sure the cafeteria is set up for our student arrival and, and their breakfast service. Mr. Bosgra understands the importance of building relationships with students in order to help them achieve their academic goals. Mr. Bosgra advocates for his students on a daily basis and ensures that his classroom is a community of learners. Not only is he a great teacher, he is also a wonderful colleague. Mr. Bosgra collaborates with his grade level team and Hoboken Middle School staff with student academic, social, and emotional learning success in mind. 
He will drop everything to lend a helping hand so he can continue to build rapport, rapport with his students and staff alike. What sets him apart from other educators is his ability to challenge his students without having them reach a level of, of frustration with his curriculum and instruction. He is patient and kind, and his energy spills over into our school community. You can always count on Mr. Bosco to attend district-wide family events, such as the magic show and school plays with his own family. When I asked his colleagues to share his, their feelings about receiving this award, I was not surprised by the reaction. Ms. Bariloff shared that Mr. Bosger is always the first person to step up when students and staff need help. His kindness, compassion for our students does not go unnoticed. My first year at Hoboken Middle School, I quickly learned that he was someone I could always count on. Congratulations, Mr. Bosger. That's from Ms. Bariloff. Ms. Ms. Falcone echoes Ms. Bariloff's sentiments and shares Mr. Bosger goes above and beyond each and every day. He is tremendous help during breakfast and lunch duties as well as passport to learning by being so involved in our school community. Mr. Bosger has been able to build such special relationships with his students and families. He most certainly deserves this recognition as Teacher of the Year. On behalf of all of us at Hoboken Middle School, please join me in congratulating our Educator of the Year, Mr. Daniel Bosgrove. Next, I would like to welcome to the podium Hoboken Middle School's Governor's Educational Service Professional of the Year, Ms. Arjenes Gutierrez. Ms. G has worked as a paraprofessional for our district for the past nine years. Her caring and loving disposition is infectious and helps create a classroom environment that feels like a second home for our students. Ms. G works closely and has even been called Ms. Burke's right hand in the classroom. When I asked Ms. Burke to describe Ms. G, she shared that she is someone who always gives her all. She has an instinct to read the room, assess the behaviors, and make quick decisions. Ms. G is someone who goes above and beyond for each and every student and teacher in the classroom and will never turn down an opportunity to help or support anyone she loves because she has the biggest heart and truly cares. Ms. Burke, Burke proudly states that Ms. G completes our school family. When I sat with Ms. G and asked her how she felt about being chosen as Education Specialist of the Year, she humbly shared that it felt very rewarding because she puts her heart and soul into her role and that after nine years, all the pieces of the puzzle fit together to showcase her effort. Not only does she work hard to support our students, she's eager to learn embrace new strategies, and helps come up with solutions to classroom problems. When her students were asked to describe Ms. G, the room quickly filled with smiles. Ms. G's students were anxious to share their thoughts. Angelina shared, she is the best, so wonderful, caring, and kind. She makes my day. Anthony shared that Ms. G helps him, helps him with school. She helps me learn and be better every day, and I love her. Amari wants everyone to know that she rocks. She is a great teacher and an even better DJ. <laughs> Two thumbs up from Amari. <laughs> Quick story, back in December, I noticed Miss G walking down Fall Street with a fully assembled Christmas tree. It was a scene out of The Grinch Who Stole Christmas. I asked Miss G what she was doing. She smiled and said, we were decorating for the holidays. I asked, where did you get the tree? She laughed and said, from my living room. This was truly heartwarming and a true testament to Ms. G's selflessness and love for her students. We are so lucky to have Ms. G as she brightens our halls each and every day. Ms. G shared with me that she recently got accepted to NJCU where she plans to further her career in education and aspires to be a teacher. I am confident that she will excel in her studies and hope that Ms. G remains in our district for years to come. Please join me in celebrating Hoboken Middle School's Educational Service Professional of the Year, Ms. Arjenes Gutierrez.
please welcome to the podium the principal of Hoboken High School, Ms. Robin Picky Pietra. While we might be last, we're certainly not least. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Caradonio to the podium, our Governor's Educator of the Year. Ms. Caradonio always puts students first. She has been a member of my special education department at Hoboken High School for over 10 years. She is dual certified and holds a high school math certification as well, which is gold to any principal. Christine is skilled and a dedicated professional. She prepares lessons that are relevant and rigorous. She is not content until the lesson produces the educational outcome she expects from her students. She inspires students of all backgrounds to learn through her example and innovative lessons and modifies for all learning styles. Her work within the department is as good as in her classroom. She is often with her colleagues discussing different ways to present curriculum to students to ensure they are meeting the standards and the skills for their grade appropriate level. Her colleagues see her as a team player and are always willing to assist when needed. Outside of the classroom, Ms. Caradonia is dedicated. If you go to any school activity, and I mean any school activity, more than any school activity I attend, Ms. Caradonia is there. I'm surprised she's not in the Red Wing outfit at times. She works after school in the academic support center, before school monitoring, um, works throughout the summer during summer school. She organizes the ACT as Hoboken High School as a testing site, and she pretty much does anything else that's asked of her. I forgot home instruction. She is a gem when it comes to home instruction. She passed me today with a student on a Google Meet, just waving to us. Um, another passion of Miss Caradonio's is her coaching. She is a three-sport coach in soccer, bowling, and softball. Often I think, does she really like these sports so much? I'm not quite sure, but she is just so passionate about being around students. She can be, at, she can be, seen, she can be seen at games even if she is not the coach, as well as school plays and district-wide events. She remains current on educational techniques, computer platforms by attending college classes at Montclair State University, PD webinars for her professional growth. She is a leader in her union, representing the interests of her colleagues as an elected building representative for the HEA. I think Ms. Caradonio is an individual who deserves this honor, as she has embedded herself in the community at Hoboken High School, as well as the community at large. As a principal, she is all you can hope for as an educator. She is intelligent, hardworking, willing to go the extra mile, goes the extra mile, and most importantly, she cares about the students she serves. Congratulations, Ms. Caradonia. Next, I'd like to welcome Ms. Gina Matera, our Educational Service Provider of the Year at Hoboken High School. Another dedicated individual to the students of Hoboken High School and the District of Hoboken. She serves as our Student Assistance Counselor and HIB Coordinator for the District. I think everyone would agree she serves all students. Ms. Matera is an integral part of our high school team. 
She has a great rapport with our students and provides them with the necessary support they need and when they need it most. But she not only serves the students, she serves the families as well. If you were ever in a meeting with Ms. Matera, it is true, truly amazing to watch her in action. She knows law, she knows the supports, and she can work with families like no other individual that I know. She has the ability to put students at ease and help them cope with the stress of both school and outside of school. Her, te her techniques are brilliant, and she treats students with respect, but demands respect in return. One of my favorite lines is, look at me, the truth is in your eyes. She always does that. And she ends every meeting with a simple question. Do you feel you were handled respectfully? And the answer is always yes. As an active participant of the Municipal Alliance, she maintains the Hoboken Public Schools Prevention Grant funding. She has ensured ways to utilize funding to best provide students with prevention and leadership programs, such as Partners in Prevention and Lindsay Meyer Teen Summer Camp. In addition, she coordinated funds with the, from the Municipal Alliance for grade level social and emotional learning and character education assemblies, and the Teen Action Task Force, as well as the New Jersey Teen, Teen Summit. Ms. Matera is passionate about Purple Ribbon and Red Ribbon Week, as she is extremely passionate about ensuring that we have a climate and a culture that respects all students. How Hoboken High School runs daily is extremely important to all of us, and Ms. Matera does her part in making sure we are known for only powerful and great things. She sits on so many, so many committees throughout the state and county, and most recently has won the following awards. 2021 Governor's Council for, on Alcoholism and Drug Abuse Hudson County Volunteer of the Year Award, and the 2019 Hudson County Municipal Alliance Volunteer of the Year Award. We are honored to add another one to your collection as the Governor's Educational Service Provider of the Year. Congratulations, Ms. Matera. Congratulations to our educators and professional service providers recognized tonight. The students. The students and the families of the Hoboken Public School District are extremely lucky to have each one of you in their lives. Thank you so much for all that you do. Um, we are going to take just a minute break um, in case anyone wants to leave or needs to leave before the business portion of our meeting. So um, we'll do that and we'll resume in just a minute. Okay, we are going to start back up again. Uh, first, we'll be going into reports. Ms. Good, uh, you have a business administrator's report for us tonight, correct? Right, I'm going to do the budget press. I'm going to present the draft 2023-2024 budget. Okay. All right. Shall we take a seat in the audience? Please. Please.
No. Oh, that's me doing that. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the uh, preliminary draft budget presentation. This is a preliminary budget that will be submitted to the county office by Monday, uh, March 20th, as required by code. Um, <clears throat> when this budget is presented, um, as I just stated, we'll send it to the county office for review. If the county office um, has any changes or updates that they wish for us to make to this budget, that will be done and those changes will be presented to Finance Committee first and then to the full board at the April meeting. These are the district highlights. The budget and the tax levy increase reflects a five-year worth of state aid loss at a total of $4,236,998. The budget and the tax levy reflects the public school district's combined tax levy increase of 52% over the past two years. Oh, I'm sorry, 0.52. It's easier for me to see this than for me to see that. So that's why I'm reading for this, because I, I can't see that. Um, this budget reflects the facts that we are in a negotiations year with all the associations for contractual salary and benefits. This budget maintains all curriculum programs as well as the curriculum development and implementation cycles. This budget includes curricula initiatives at all levels, thanks to um, Ms. Sandra Rodriguez Gomez. And this budget maintains all co-curricular and extracurricular programs at the elementary, middle, and high school level. This budget includes a large increase due to health benefits. We realized a health benefit increase in January of 15%, and our broker is recommending an additional 15% health benefit increase in the 2023-24 school year. <clears throat> This budget includes a 5% increase of all of our property insurances. This is in addition to um, our health benefits uh, insurance policies. This budget maintains all, maintains all special education programs, and this budget absorbs the pilot payment budget in the 2022-2023 school year. This is our operating budget. For our child study team, which is part of special education, $1.9 million. Our custodial services at $3.2 million. Our estimated employee benefits at $4.4 million. And that's only a part of our estimated benefits. We're recommending or estimating that our benefits will exceed $9 million for next school year. That's health benefits only. Uh, transportation at 2.5 million. Our school-based budget means all of our, our five schools, three elementaries, middle and high school, at 35 million dollars. Our regular program and instructions at 1.4 million dollars. That means Fund 11 programs such as uh, gifted and talented are built into the general fund budget, which is Fund 11. They're not built into Fund 15. Um, and our regular maintenance for all schools. So our maintenance budget is in two parts. We have a maintenance budget that is built in with the Fund 15 school base budget, and then we have a district-wide facility slash maintenance slash custodial budget that is in the general fund, which is Fund 11. Our operating budget, <clears throat> other. This is other only. Improvement of instructions. This is additional programs um, that work outside of the regular um, school budgets. So this is not in Fund 15. These are in Fund 11. Central Service and Administration, which means Dr. Johnson's office 
as well as the business office is $680,992. Our technology department is $931,473. OT, OT, PT, and related services, which are contracted services for special education uh, students, is one, $1, million. $15,494. Okay, so technology is broken up in two parts. You have technology, which is in Fund 11, and a program code of 252. And you also have the media portion of technology, which is funded in 11, program number 222. So the 222 is the $214,952. Special schools is $300,000. Uh, equipment, which this is equipment that is be utilized in the schools, such as Promethean boards, um, any laptops and or computers. This does not include iPads and or Chromebooks, and that's 165000 Food service, 250000 This 250000 represents uh, the deficit that we currently have for our uh, but now food service department. Um, this is by way of um, a shortfall from our students who uh, have unpaid lunch balances. So we are responsible for covering the shortfall um, so our budget doesn't show a deficit at the end of the school year. Summer school is broken out in two parts. The instruction, and this is an estimate of 158,785. We also have the school sponsored activities with its athletic, and this amount is for summer only at 159,807 because this amount falls in Fund 11, and this is for summer programs as well. Care and upkeep of the grounds, 147,788. Attendance and social services, 154,511 in health services at 39,850. Special education instruction, this is for um, additional services as may be needed um, by a particular student at $22,000. Interest that we will receive on three of our funds were estimated at $2,350. Instructional and staff training, is built into a grant. That's why you see a zero dollar amount here. Okay. Key budget drivers. The charter school, I'm sorry. The charter school budget for the 23-24 school year is increased by $851,229. This equals a 7.47% increase over their 2022-23 budget. As on the next slide, budgeted charter school transfers since 2014 have increased by 56.88%, from $7.8 million to $12.2 million. This is a chart representing the charter school increases from 2014 to the proposed budget for 2024. I'll give you a minute to absorb. Key budget drivers. In addition to the charter school increases since fiscal year 2020, enacted S2 legislation, legislation, the Hoboken Board of Education has seen a schedule reduction in its state aid. Um, this list, the aid increase and decrease by tax levy for the charter school and for the district, it also represents the state aid that we lost through S2 in red. The loss of S2 funding for us will end in fiscal year 2024-25, so you will see a deduction in state aid in the following year budget as well. This represents our full budget, our full general fund budget, include Fund 11, and Fund 15, which is known as the school-based budget. Our local tax levy 
for 2324 is $59,940,002. $2. Our private donations, which usually comes from the HPEF, $100,000. Our interest, as I previously spoke about, $2,350. Our rent, which is paid um, to, it comes from the state to us, and we pay it for the Jubilee Center, is $1.5 million. Our miscellaneous revenue is $65,000. Our pilot payment, which I needed to build into this budget at $1 million. Our state aid, which is a loss in state aid. This number represents the amount that we will receive from the state, which is a drop from this current year at $7,394,850. Excuse me, $52. Our federal aid, which is restricted, is $215,704. Our budgeted fund balance. So, what is a budget of fund balance? A budget of fund balance is money that the auditors realize at the end of fiscal year 2022 that we didn't spend, plus we froze spending January 1, and this is additional monies that we expect to save in this year's budget. So for fiscal year 2000, June 2022, we're realizing a little over a million dollars saved by way of the audit, which will be released at the end of this week. And then the additional money is the money we're expecting to have left over in this budget year. Our revenue projections. I just showed you what they are. This happens just to be a, a chart. And if you have any questions, it would be a little simpler for you to just shoot me an email and I will do a Q&A for all the questions I receive by way of email. Thank you. Okay, next we're going to go into committee reports. Um, we'll start with curriculum. Ms. McGurk. Good evening. Oh, a little loud. Uh, first, I'd like to start off by congratulating all of our educators, service professionals, and students who were recognized this evening. We are so proud of you. The Curriculum Committee met virtually on Thursday, March 9, 2023. In attendance were Superintendent Dr. Johnson, Assistant Superintendent Rodriguez Gomez, Ms. Catamatori, Mr. Delator, Mr. Grania, and myself. There are seven items on this evening's agenda, and we recommend all for board approval. The first is the approval of our preschool operating plan for the 2023-2024 school year. Items 8.02 and 8.03 are the approval of grant submissions. The first is a NJDOE Community Development Block Grant that if the submission is successful, will help to fund um, LEAP summer camp attendance for students receiving free and reduced lunch. The second submission is for the NJDOE Climate Education Awareness Grant that would fund locally focused climate awareness initiatives that design, demonstrate, and or deploy climate awareness education curricula activities practices or strategies based on the New Jersey student learning standards. Items 8.04 and 8.05 are approvals of agreements and partnerships with local universities, Montclair State and Fairleigh Dickinson University. The partnership with Montclair State University will deliver an educational leadership program and a bilingual bicultural certification program to professional educators from Hoboken and neighboring districts. The agreement with Fairleigh Dickinson University will be a collaboration on implementing the 2020 Computer St Science Student Learning Standards. Last but not least on the agenda is the approval of assemblies and presentations and field trips. 
Of note, the um, Rocking Red Wings will be traveling to Manchester Township in May for a band and chorus competition, and the Hispanic Honor Society and Hispanic Culture Club will be doing a team building activity at Camelback and Hershey Park. The committee also discussed the following items which are not on the evening's agenda. The class of 2023 will have 28 graduates who have earned the New Jersey Seal of Biliteracy. It's a very rigorous uh, addition to their regular high school diploma, and we congratulate them. Um, AP testing will be taking place from the 1st of May through the 11th of May, and students will be participating in Kaplan review programs so that they're well prepared for the tests. And our high school students are currently in the midst of NJGPA testing, and we wish them the best of luck. The committee discussed preparations for the NJSLA testing that will be taking place during the month of May. Our principals, to use Sandra's uh, words, have a laser-like focus on student achievement, and the committee was very pleased with the framework that uh, Dr. Johnson and Ms. Rodriguez-Gomez shared with us that will help to identify areas in need of intervention that building principals can use to help our students succeed. Lastly, Dr. Johnson shared additional data on the potential dual language pilot program, and our committee looks forward to hearing more at our April committee meeting. In closing, um, many of our students during the month of March are participating in programs that have brought them overseas. As our high school representative mentioned earlier, the Hoboken uh, High School Harvard Model Congress has been in Europe, uh, just in Madrid, Spain, and they're returning tomorrow. Uh, they won 12 awards, more than any other delegation at the uh, Congress. We're very, very proud of them for their uh, accomplishments on the international scene. And next week, our Classrooms Without Walls program will depart for Ecuador and the Galapagos. We wish them all safe travels uh, there and back and look forward to hearing about their trip. And that's all for my report. Thank you. Uh, next, we'll go on to facilities. Ms. Kana. Hello. Good evening. The Facilities Committee met on Friday, March 10th at 1130 a.m. In attendance were Mr. Callagy, Dr. Johnson, Ms. Katamatori, Ms. Norwood, Mr. Klupfel, and myself. There are two agenda items for facilities this month, and we recommend both for board approval. 12.01 is a fire and safety drill for February, and 12.02 is a facilities use request form from Hoboken Catholic Academy who wishes to utilize our football stadium for their field day, May 19, from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. And I would also like to congratulate all our students and our fabulous teachers for their recognitions. Thank you. Thank you. Finance, Mr. Klepfel. I'm oh, sorry, thank you. Um, the Finance Committee did meet on Friday, March 10th. Uh, with me were Ms. Angley, Mr. Del Torre, uh, Ms. Norwood, uh, Ms. Lopez, and uh, Ms. Good. Uh, we did review uh, and touch on all agenda items and uh, recommend all for approval. Um, not much more for me to say. Uh, of course, uh, uh, Ms. Good uh, just reviewed the tentative budget, which was uh, what we were discussing. Uh, primarily, and as I pointed out in my communication to the other board members, you'll see that I think 12 point, uh, uh, 10 point 12 uh, uh, looks familiar. It's a revised uh, list of uh, staff and uh, salaries associated with grants. Um, we approved it in uh, February's meeting, but it's been some minor revisions, uh, Ms. Good, right? Um, uh, so we're asking for uh, reapproval tonight. Uh, and then finally, it just needs to be said, I think uh, item 12.02 uh, is a, approval of uh, facility usage. Uh, Hoboken Catholic Academy uh, is asking for use of the uh, Lewis M. Tagliari Junior Memorial Stadium for their field day, uh, which of course, um, as with all use of the field days with all public schools in Hoboken, we, we do not charge a rent for them. That's, uh, facility provided for free. Thank you. Thank you. And governance, Ms. Katamatori. Good evening. Uh, Ms. Takirian cannot be here tonight, so I'm going to read her report. The Governance and Personnel Committee met on Thursday, March 9th. In attendance were Dr. Johnson, myself, Ms. McGurk, Ms. Kana, and Ms. Takirian. The committee discussed all agenda items and recommend all for approval. Um, as is typical throughout the year, you'll see a number of agenda items for appointments, transfers, terminations, and resignations of teachers and other personnel. 
In tonight's agenda, this includes paraprofessionals, custodial staff, security guards, teachers, substitutes, coaches, lifeguards, um, district family conventions, and personnel for passports learning and district musical staff. A couple items of note. Um, 9.01 is the acceptance of resignations for 22-23 school year. Special acknowledgement and thanks to Mr. William Apicella for 40 years of service to the district, including 23 at Hoboken High School. He is loved by his students and peers alike. Thank you for your dedication to our community and especially our special education students. Mr. Apicella, you will be surely missed and we wish you good health and much happiness in retirement. 9.17, approval of volunteers for music department for the District of Hoboken. Special thanks to all the parents and guardians who generously give their time as volunteers to support the district music department every year. 9.18, approval of the Hoboken Public School District calendar for the 23-24 school year. Please note that the calendar for the upcoming school year is on this agenda, obviously. 22-23 um, merit goals. This, on this agenda 9.20, you'll see the superintendent's two qualitative merit goals related to program development of the River Explorers Institute and program development of the Urban Farming Institute, which are both um, progressing right now. On, under section 17, you'll see uh, four different policies. This is the second reading of those, of those policies and regulations, and um, they are on the agenda for approval. Um, the only non-agenda, or there's two non-agenda items I want to mention. Um, we're in the process of our NJQSAC update and are thus far doing quite well. We will update at completion of the review, um, and we are also in the high school transition survey and enrollment review period. Thank you. Thank you. Well, once again, I'd like to congratulate our governor, governors, educators, and professional service providers recognized tonight. We're extremely lucky to have such wonderful educators and professional service providers contributing to this great district and to the lives of our students and their families. Um, and I would also like to congratulate the Hoboken High School debate team, who as noted tonight are just wrapping up a trip to Madrid, Spain, uh, where they competed in the Harvard Model Congress Europe. Uh, we are extremely proud of our students and their advisors, Mr. DiRonado and Mr. Huggins. Uh, and then just on to touch on the budget, I'd like to reiterate that the board will not vote on the budget tonight, but rather the administration has presented their draft budget to the board and now it will be sent to the county for their review as well as uh, for the board's review. The budget vote will take place on May 9th and between now and then the board will have the ability to meet with the district's business administrator, um, dive into the budget, ask questions, and there will be a public uh, budget presentation on May 2nd. With that in mind, uh, moving on to public comments on agenda items only. Ms. Pat Laters. Patricia Waiters. Um, just let me clarify. Oh, you know what? Bef before you start, I just want to um, go through just some. Uh, things that I like to say before the public comment. Is it pertaining to the public comment? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, over the years and most recently, the board has been asked why it does not prohibit or stop comments about school district employees from individuals who speak during the public comment portion of the meeting. The short answer is that the law prevents the board from censoring comments made about district personnel. The board does not condone, nor is the board party to comments as such. However, just because a speaker may have the right to say what he or she feels, it does not absolve a speaker from liability for any defamatory comments that an employee may bring up against the speaker. Should speakers say something that subjects them to a civil suit, the responsibility falls squarely on the speaker and not on the board. I would also like to remind speakers of board policy, please state your name, municipality of residence, and business affiliation, if any. Speakers are allowed five minutes, and I will, or Ms. Katamatori will quietly motion with 30 seconds left. Please address all comments to the chair. Board policy states that the board welcomes comments on matters of interest to the board, but this is not an opportunity for dialogue or debate between speakers and board members or the superintendent. With that being said, you have five minutes, Ms. Waiters. Under public comments, page two, this is for members of the public. She just, I mean, I'm sorry, the, the chair just um, read from public participation. If you look down where it says state your name and affiliation, she also have listed here, you have the right to speak for five minutes. Please direct your comments to the board chair. 
Be mindful that this government act as a government body. I am addressing it to the chair and the board it's in the entirety as a, gov as a whole. I just want that placed on the record and I am well aware of your little speech that you gave for the public portion. I've been doing these meetings long enough. With that being said, it's a coincidence because that's what I'll be speaking about tonight and I'm gonna need some answers from Corporation Council here because I mean, you, you work for the same firm with Mr. Gargliotti, am I right? I want to make sure this is the same. All right, so I'm addressing this to you guys as a body. I did try to reach out to you, Madam Chair, with respect to what I feel that school-related, also me being an employee-related, not directly union-related, even though I am the union president. I want it placed on the record tonight because I feel that it's serious enough for me to address this board. I want to know the complete chain of command, who act completely under whose authority. And what I mean by that is the board administrator is overseen by who, who oversee this board in its entirety, because at the end of the day, when you do superintendent searches or whatever, this board act as a body in doing the hiring and the firing and such. So real brief, all I need to know when I do have comments and matters of serious concern like I had two weeks ago, I reached out to the former president, Mr. Clumford. Thank you so much for your professionalism and your response. You did give me the chair's person email, but I used both emails. I tried to utilize it, and I didn't get a return call. So tonight, maybe you could tell me and other members of the public, unless this, in case this happened to them, I need to know the full chain of command because I don't disrespect nobody. I like to follow the chain of command to make sure I'm in full compliance so I can know where to direct my concerns, especially if I think it's crucial enough and life-threatening to me. Okay, so when I do that and reach out, I'm reaching out to you again. And if Miss Good is your business administrator, it don't go to her until I finish. I'm asking for an independent investigation, which is going to be kind of hard because most of you guys run against me for the last 15 years. So that's when it gets a little biased. You go from being my opponents in the election, my adversaries or whatever, and then I got to come to you with a serious matter that I, of concern that I need addressed immediately. So tonight I'm asking you, not as Pat Waiters, not as the candidate, not as the, the one that you run against and is you against me, and politics out. I'm an employee for this district. I'm a school employee security guard. I'm also the president of the union. And I know there's a contract with the president of the union and negotiations with this body. I've read everything. I just want to know now, who do I address it to? Corporation counsel, Madam Chair, or the business administrator? As you know, we are not having a dialogue tonight, but I would like to clarify that I did not receive any communication from you. My email is public, feel free to use it, but I did not receive any communication from you. Okay, so can However, you give me a correct email? Uh, I can talk to you after, or it's, it's public, it's, it's not a secret. Um, however, I think it would be inappropriate as an employee to come to the board president. Um, Corporation Council, can you? I'll weigh sign in on a rice that? notice. I know the law. I'm, it was not inappropriate. I'm willing to sign a rice notice. That's why I'm asking you to chain the command and who do I direct my situation to? An employee, I'll, I'll sign a rice notice. When I sign a rice notice, I give up my rights. I'm talking in public already. I mean, yes. you'd have to follow the chain of command. Can you just uh, verify? Right. The chain of command always is and, and confirmed in the Ethics Act for school board members to well, then thank you, Superintendent, because you've been very cooperative. I did reach out to you and you respond immediately, so I want that also placed on the record. And you've been nothing but professional, and I appreciate that. So then I am within rights and did the right thing if I'm following the chain of command. Thank you so much. Thank you. Enjoy your night. Thank you. Mr. Kevin Davis. Good evening, school board. Um, this is just in reference to the adoption of the preliminary budget. I know it's preliminary that you have to propose a budget and then you have hearings or you learn from the departments over uh, you know, what's different in their budget this year. Um, I did have some questions, but luckily, you know, all the initial ones I had were actually answered by the presentation, so thank you for doing that. Um, I do have some more questions, but I'll try and get the answers on my own by looking at uh, the budget. 
the preliminary budget once it's submitted to the county. Uh, and as a note, our budget presentation, the public bu budget presentation, will be May 2nd. So feel free to attend that. Or you can contact the business administrator. Mr. Manuel Solar. Sorry. Manuel Rivera Soler, 529 Park Avenue. Um, Madam President, uh, the prior speaker took all of my questions, but I will say um, I would be interested in, in knowing when you vote for this this evening. Again, it's just tentative. Many things will change, meaning possibly um, the tax rate will be higher, the amount of anything here could change at any time. You don't have to answer the question because of course when I answer, you know, you're not allowed to answer questions or you don't want to, but if that could be cleared up in the next meeting, if you could let us know, uh, members of the public would be interested in knowing exactly if that amount of 74 million, I think it was, 75 million, um, will that be increased in any way due to the fact that maybe something comes up or, or something like that. These are things that we would like to know, members of the public, and um, th that would be basically my question in regards to that or my comments on the budget at this point in time. But I also would like to um, uh, join in uh, also saying congratulations to the teachers that were also uh, recognized this evening and the students that uh, are on the debate team. I also was once on the debate team I think I may have lost a couple times, but uh, I persevered. So I thank you, and I'll come back in public comments. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, this, that's the last one. Okay. Um, excuse me? I'm sorry? Yes, that was for the agenda items. Yeah. For agenda items. Okay, so now we'll move on to consent agenda. Is there a motion? motion? Motion. Second. Who made the motion? Chitali. Okay. Give me a roll call, please. Ms. Gadamatori? Yes. Mr. Connor? Mr. Grana? Yes. Mr. Delator? Yes. Ms. Kana? Uh, abstain on 6.01 and yes to everything else. Mr. Clubful? Yes. Ms. McGurk? Yes. Ms. Angley? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, so now we'll move on to comments on both agenda and non agenda items. Ms. Waiters. Pat Waiters, I just want to give a, um, a shout out for Women History Month to our superintendent, Dr. Christine Johnson, um, see, overseeing the school or whatever. I know your hands could be real full. Um, and Mr. Sorafine, I have to say this again, Miss Pick, a few of you guys really deserve it. We don't have to wait until uh, March to recognize you. I want you guys to keep up the good work. It isn't easy nowadays with, I mean, I raised six kids, but it isn't easy and it's challenging. You guys are doing a wonderful job with respect to positive reinforcement. I am like happy every time I walk in this building at work at one o'clock and see Mr. Sorafine in action. He's not a female, but I'm giving him a shout out tonight anyway. And all of the young ladies that's in the district, keep your head up. Continue to give our kids positive reinforcement and happy Women History Month. Thank you. 
Ms. Versace. Good evening. Good evening. Roseanne Versace, uh, Wallace School. Um, I'm speaking uh, tonight on behalf of the uh, members and officers of the Hoboken Education Association. Um, although I know I am a bit biased, I truly believe Hoboken has the greatest teachers and staff of any public school district. I am constantly in awe of how much time and care our teachers and ESPs devote to their students, going above and beyond the bounds or limits of a classroom. Tonight we honor 10 staff members in particular who were selected by their peers to represent the best of the best. Joseph Addison, a 17th century English essayist and poet, once said, what sculpture is to a block of marble, education is to the human soul. As educators and ESPs, they use their tools that they have developed, cultivated, and learned in their years of experience to free a figure and create a beautiful sculpture from a child. It may take time, and it may not always be easy, but they do with love, dedication, and selfness, selflessness asking not for nothing in return, nor expecting anything either. And so to be honored this evening, and in such a special way, should be a cause for them to celebrate and reflect on all the students and colleagues they have touched so profoundly. Congratulations to our teachers and ESPs on this wonderful achievement, and thank you for all you do for the Hoboken Public School District. Now from honoring teachers and staff in the prime of their careers, I want to honor uh, someone very special in the culmination of his fine career, our esteemed colleague, William Apicella, on his retirement from teaching in the Hoboken Public School District. Bill, a native of Hobokenite, began teaching in the Hoboken Public School System in 1983, which was already mentioned, means he has dedicated 40 years to the teaching, nurturing, and cultivating the minds and hearts of the young people of Hoboken. A well-respected and much loved teacher of special education English at Hoboken High School, Bill was also honored as the Hoboken High School Teacher of the Year for 2018 and 2019. Congratulations to Bill. May he never forget that he opened minds and made such an important impact on his students. He will certainly be missed, no doubt, but we wish him a long, restful, and enjoyable retirement. He has certainly earned it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Davis? No. Mr. Solero? Buenas noches, good evening, uh, once again. Uh, I would like to start my remarks again, as the prior speaker said, once again, congratulations, congratulating, congratulating, see, that's why I lost my debates, uh, <laughs> to the uh, professionals that um, were recognized, the educators that were recognized this evening, and again, a happy retirement to uh, the individual who is retiring. I believe I may have been in school uh, just about when I was graduating. Uh, also, I would like to once again, to the students who are returning tomorrow, happy, safe journey, wishing them the best and on the debate team and on their return, they should be um, received as, as the heroes that they are. Um, I would also like to take now the opportunity to speak on a uh, subject of this building. Um, I think I spoke in the last meeting about the uh, emergency work that was being done in the building um, in regards to the um, objects that fell from it, and some objects were uh, removed as well when the inspection was done. But my concern is that the body that has to uh, deal with that issue um, has not been in communication as to um, March 2nd um, with the Historic Preservation Commission. I say because I was at that meeting as well, and they had a, a conversation in their new uh, business in regards to they have uh, not received any information from the district in regards to the care being given to the building. Um, we need to have uh, a better 
communication with the agencies that are going to oversee the, the preservation of the building because it is a historic building. And I know that um, uh, you all, you all always are on it, but um, in this one, because I was at the meeting, I was able to come and, and explain it to you this evening that you need to have priority to maintaining the historic preservation of this building. Meaning what comes down, if it can be preserved, it needs to be returned in its proper space. If it cannot, if it's not able to be, then something of equal historic value must be put back on the facade of this building. This is a majestic building. This is a building that needs to be reserved, uh, preserved. Um, and even if you do work inside of the building, you also have to preserve as well all of the beautiful features that it has. So that is my concern. That is why I'm speaking in the public comment. Again, it's just an observation. If someone could please, if they have already, then my apologies, because it was March 2nd. But if they have not, please, this is very important um, for the history of, of our city. And I, as a born son of it, I would like to keep it. This is why I go to all the meetings to make sure that as much as I could give my input, uh, I try to so that we can preserve as much as we can. And I thank you for your time. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Johnson. Ms. Oldraker. Oh, uh, I, I mean, just for the board's um, understanding and also for Mr. Uh, Solar, we um, have been in communication with the um, Historic Preservation Commission. Uh, we received um, a letter not long ago asking if we would um, provide them with like an action plan. Um, however, prior to receiving the letter, a member of the Historic Preservation Committee has been in this building multiple times actually looking at the items. Um, we've ensured and we've let them know as well, the entire commission, that any item that has fallen um, that maybe has broken or shattered. Um, another item that has been removed that is of like um, object, um, that we will do everything we can to replace the items with um, the same like structure um, in order to preserve everything on the exterior of the building. Um, we're waiting for the engineer's report. As soon as that engineer's report comes in, it'll be shared with um, the officials, and um, but we're cooperating with them very closely. Mary Andreka, 159 9th Street. I'm going to talk about the budget. I don't know what kind of belt tightening has been talked about in approaching a budget. With the Hoboken City Council, we have a 7% increase that was reported in the news on Saturday. With this budget, you, I assume it's uh, based upon the numbers, it's a $2,691,093. That's a 4.7% increase. In this world today, there is incredible strain on society and people and belt tightening has to be exercised on all levels. I noticed the Jubilee Center is being rented out at 1,500,000, I think was the second figure. Uh, I think that's extraordinarily high. I know I've been in the Jubilee Center. It's basically an athletic area. I don't know if you have any classrooms there, but I think you should dump that idea. Um, 1,500,000 is a lot of money to save. Um, the health insurance that goes up everywhere in all businesses, it is taken upon the um, uh, employees. I don't know if these teachers are unionized. I have to investigate all that. I don't know if every single time a cost goes up that you expect the taxpayers to brunt that burden, to bear that. We and employees have to add on more and more of our own costs. And I think it's only fair that that also is added to the teachers. The teachers are paid relatively well. They're not impoverished salaries. So if they have to change their uh, health care, they will. They could. 
So I, I think that's not fair to the residents. As I said, the city council budget at 7% is, is, a, is a massive hike and you want a 4.7 at least. I need to see numbers, of course, you say on May 2nd. I need to see numbers that would reflect some kind of belt tightening. It's not fair that just because something goes up that you expect the taxpayer to bear that burden and you expect all non-parents to bear that burden. So I don't, I know I've seen the city budget and they've argued on it. I would hope that this school board would do the same. I believe that's all I have to say, but I'm assuming it's fluid, or at least it should be at that percentage rate. We can't bear all burdens. Life is very unpredictable. Thank you. Thank you. Sure, Dr. Johnson. Yeah. Um, just in terms of the budget, to make a quick statement, I think it's important to know that um, over the construction of this budget certainly was not um, an easy task. Um, between the business administrator, assistant business administrator, um, and the school principals. Putting the budget together was a challenge, and it was a challenge for a couple of reasons, because as you can see, over the last few years, the reduction of state aid has been impactful. Um, whether we kind of, some people will like to brush it off a little bit and say, well, you know, the state aid doesn't really mean anything, but over four million dollars in a reduction of state aid is impactful to a school district's budget for sure. Um, many of you are reading in the newspaper what some districts are going through in terms of tax levy increases. Over the last two years, um, it's important for uh, not only the board but the community to know that we did everything that we could to ensure that our tax levy from the school district side, the, the Hoboken Public School District, did not have an impact on taxpayers in a way that was harmful. Um, so as a result, in 2021-2022, we had a, um, our portion of the tax bill was a negative tax in, impact um, of uh, minus 0.2%. And the following year, we had a tax levy increase of 0.72%, um, less than 1%. So for the past two years, we've done everything we, we could to ensure that the tax impact was not really felt. Unfortunately, this year, with the um, reduction of state aid and the fact that many of the COVID grants that came in are no longer uh, there, we had to um, shift some of our funding back to the general fund budget and the two years of the lack of a tax um, levy or i should say a, a extremely minimal tax levy for for two years which averaged to a 0.52 percent um, in the community it, it, it caught up to us this year for sure. Um, if we stayed somewhat steady and stayed with that two percent, um, uh, you know, two to two and a half percent each year, uh, we wouldn't be feeling it the way we're feeling it this year. Um, but we did try and make a commitment over the last years, last two years, to keep it um, as low as we possibly could. In terms of our faculty. I think it's important for everyone to know, I'll go on record, that it's been very challenging and it's been challenging for people outside of the education field as well, but here in the Hoboken schools, our faculty, our staff, our clerks, our custodial staff, our maintenance staff, our security, our teachers, everybody took a stand, they stood up, they did things in the school district for the children in Hoboken that no one um, in our area was really able to do and um, if, if I was able to give them 
a 25% increase, I would give them a 25% increase because the value that they bring to the children is immeasurable. At this, at the same time, at the same time, we are a local governing body, and we do understand the impact that taxes have on a community. And so, as a result of that, we take. Um, any feedback from the community on our proposed budget, our tentative budget, um, with great seriousness. We don't brush it off. I want you to know that e although this is, you know, a, a budget that we're presenting this evening, um, there's no doubt in my mind that myself and the assistant superintendent, assistant business administrator, business administrator, and our school principals will go back into this budget we will continue to look at it and continue to see if there are ways that we can enhance the budget. Um, I do want to make one important uh, correction that the rental revenue uh, that Ms. Good um, mentioned, uh, I think just in, in the haste of doing the presentation, she was showing rental revenue, not rental um, spending. And so that rental revenue is money that's coming into the district, that 1.5%. It's not what we're paying out to Jubilee. Um, and the Jubilee Center, for those of you who are not aware, is a community center that we rent for preschool space. So we have uh, four preschool classrooms that are located in the Jubilee Center. And we did that specifically just to relieve some space in our elementary schools for um, kindergarten classrooms. Um, so we are not paying Jubilee 1.5 million for rent. Um, and like I said, we will go back into this budget, do our due diligence. It is a tentative budget and we still have some time to see what it will look like. It is not our intent for the tax levy to increase higher than what you see here. Um, in, in fact, our, our goal is to go back in. I cannot make any promises that it will be reduced, but we certainly will do everything we can to uh, try, and hopefully the next time we come back to all of you with a budget presentation, it, it's our hope that it certainly will um, either look the same or um, maybe a, a little bit different, but our intent is not for it to look higher. Thank you for that, Dr. Johnson. Do we have any other speakers tonight? No. No? Okay. I'm sorry? Yeah, what's your day? John. John who? Good evening, everyone. So, uh, just real quick, first Please of all... Please state your name and municipality of residence. Yeah. John Heidis from Jersey City. Most of you know me from Hudson County View. So, just first of all, I do want to thank Ms. Good for the presentation. It was actually quite uh, informative, and I don't mind saying better than a lot that I've seen from other districts. Uh, so, with that said, I, and also, I will say, uh, Superintendent, that was a good follow-up as well. Just two things that I want a clarification on now. The tax levy increase that they showed on the slideshow, it's at 8.47%. So, that's the same as what the city said last week that their preliminary budget's $135 million budget with 7%, just wanted to clarify that. And another thing, to put it into perspective, they said for every home assessed, I believe it was in the ballpark of $510,000, it would only be an increase of about $156 a year. Would you be able to provide some sort of a comparison that would be apt to that? That's all, thank you. Yes, thank you. We'll, we'll absolutely, Miss um, Good, yeah, we'll, okay. we'll absolutely so, provide that. Um, Okay. Yeah, um, <clears throat> Mr. Highness, we'll, um, when we come back with the next presentation, we'll put um, a, a nice chart together, which we usually do, that will give you the breakdown per um, house um, and average assessed value um, with the tax levy. And we'll provide all of that. This was really just to kind of get the initial budget out there to the community and then have some further discussions and work on the budget. Oh, no, no, it is. It's it's the eight point, well, hold on, because I want to make sure I'm giving it to you accurately. <coughs> it, 
It's 8.47. Okay, so now we will be going into executive session um, for the purpose of discussing matters covered under attorney-client privilege. Uh, we will not be taking action when we return, so we'll just be coming back to close the meeting and we'll be approximately 45 minutes. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Okay, can we have the roll call, please? Liz Cavanatori. Yes. Liz DeGrana. Yes. Mr. Delator. Yes. Ms. Hanna. Yes. Mr. Cluckful. Yes. Ms. McGurk. Yes. Ms. Angley. Yes. Okay, it is now 10.33 p.m. and we are just coming back from executive session. Do I have a motion to resume the meeting? So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Ms. Catamatori. Yes. Mr. Grana. Yes. Mr. Delator. Yes. Ms. Connor. Yes. Mr. Clubful. Yes. Ms. McGurk. Yes. Mr. Keir, uh, Ms. Uh, Angley. Yes. Motion passes. And with no further business, do I have a motion to close the meeting? Motion. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Mm -hmm.